So this is Saber. I'm going to be saddling him up. We're going to be doing uh, another video on him with him in a few minutes. But while I'm saddling him up, I want to do uh, my Wednesday Wash Right Wisdom video. And the topic I want to talk about today is your initial thought pro process when you think about addressing problems with your horse or issues that your horse is giving you. And... I see a lot of this when people do Google searches. What do I do about a horse that bites? What do I do about a horse that kicks? How do you handle a disrespectful horse? There's all, all kind of Google searches like that, and that's how people, that's how people think of it. But I want to start getting you to think of this in a little bit different way. Everybody when they first address an issue with the horse, they want to rule out pain because you don't want to work a horse when pain somewhere is causing the issue. But the other side of that coin, if pain is not causing the issue, the other part of that that is going to influence the problem is an environmental effect. And by environmental, I don't mean rain, mud, that kind of thing. I mean, what is his surrounding environment? Most of the time, that is where the issues come in. And by environment, that can be his stall. It can mean whether he's out, whether he's in, how I interact with him, how other horse interacts with him. That's what really establishes environment. And just about all issues will go back to some sort of environmental stimulation and environmental influence that's actually causing that problem. So when you look at a horse that has a problem, this is Sabre, I mean, he have, don't have a problem, we're training him, but when you look at a horse with a problem, and I get comments all the time. Can this issue cause pain? Can this issue be caused by pain? Just about everything can be caused by pain. But you have to look at it is, is this issue likely caused by pain? Don't operate in the cans. And by that, can this happen? Can this cause this? Operate in the likelies, the here and now, what actually is happening. You can come up with a can pain cause an issue for everything. And that's not really very helpful. Look at the situation that you have in, in front of you and, and analyze, is this issue likely caused by pain is this issue likely caused by something that's impacting him environmentally and work from there people want to make an issue pain related because that's easy to call a vet call a chiropractor call somebody give him the horse medication and then it's all went better it's all good you move on People don't want to admit any issue is environmental related because that is that takes a whole lot more effort on the owner's part to fix. It's easy to fix pain. It's a lot harder to fix environmental. So when I see people trying to account for pain for something when possibly a one percent chance it could be pain related and they want to rule out that one percent first i guess you can i think it's not very helpful it's not very productive for your long-term horsemanship to rule out that one percent first But you have to recognize when a problem is environmental, people impacted, and you have to be willing to 
address that issue and correct that issue. When I search Google for environmental impacts on a horse, what a horse impacts a horse environmentally, what ho impacts a horse in its surroundings, how do people's interactions with horses impact the horse? Very little out there. But probably, hey, hey, probably 80% of what goes on with horses, 80% of the issues with the horses that I get, that's really what the problem is. Something in that horse's in surroundings, environment, has impacted that horse in a negative way. With Saber here, he's seven years old, really wasn't turned out very much, wasn't handled very much. That's what has impacted him in his surroundings, in his environment. That's what we're working on now. That's a lot harder to correct than a vet, than pain. So I will be writing a blog post going into more detail on this subject, on the environmental impacts. And by environmental, I mean the stuff around the horse and the horse's environment, how that impacts a horse and how different things impact the horse in different ways and cause certain issues. The process that I have here when horses come in for training, I have certain ways that I do things. I have certain things in the environment, in the horse's environment, that I know is conducive for good behavior. And just by getting the horse out of the situation that it was in and into the situation here with an environment that Turn your head right there. He's wanting to kind of be nippy. Like I've talked about before, I'm not going to address the nippy. It's environment. He was in a stall last night. He has a lot of energy. He's ready to be out. There's no sense doing anything about the nippy when I know that is caused from an environmental impact. He was in a stall all last night. He's got a lot of energy. He's not trying to just nip at me, so he's chewing on that. It's environmental. So by bringing the horse out of the situation it was in, bringing it to my place, putting it in an, an environment more conducive for better progress on the horse's part, you're going to end up working a lot of problems just, just in that in general. So think about that with your horse. Think about what in your horse's environment, his surroundings, is impacting his behavior, both positive and negative, because everything affects in a positive and negative behavior. Uh, think about situations that kids are in. It's exactly the same way. Their surroundings impact them in a positive and a negative way. It's the exact same thing with the horse. So uh, that's today's wash, tack, riz, wash rack wisdom thought. Think about your horse's environment, his surroundings, what impacts him both positively and negatively. Tell me in the comments below uh, what impacts your horse in his surroundings positively and negatively. Is it you? Is it your stall situation? Turn out, how he comes out, how he comes into the stall, how he goes out from the stall, your riding routine, uh, everything impacts him in one way or another. Tell me about your situation. Uh, this is Sabre. We're actually going to start uh, training to shoot off of him this morning. That video will be out soon if it hadn't already come out when you see this video. I'll have his playlist up here if you're watching on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for watching.